The capybara's fur is not thick, is yellowish-reddish in color, and grows darker as the animal ages. Its neck is short, its head voluminous, its snout high and truncated. Its eyes and nasal orifices are protruding and are set in the upper part of the head, an adaptation related to its aquatic habits. We distinguish the adult male by a hump on its snout. It is a cluster of glands whose secretion has a communication function, probably having to do with the animal's territory and status. The capybara has another gland situated on both sides of the anus, which is well developed in both sexes. Its function has not been precisely determined, though it appears to be related to identifying the group's members. Here we observe an individual marking vegetation with its hump and anal gland. Capybaras abound more in tropical plains and always live close to the water. Its natural habitat is lagoons and channels surrounded by savanna, where it is easy to get the pasture it feeds on, commonly known as capybara straw, though it consumes several types of fodder. The species tolerates the total lack of natural shade, though it can also live in woody areas if food is available on the riverbanks or in the lower woods. They can be seen mainly on the cattle ranches of Apure and Barina states, sharing their habitat with the herds. Where conservation is practiced, the capybara populations are similar in number to those of cattle. Naturalists of the last century, such as Humboldt, indicated that the crocodile and jaguar were the capybara's main predators. Nowadays, they are no longer a threat because of the drastic reduction of their populations. The adult is practically without enemies, and survival is limited by natural diseases, hunting, and the annual slaughter for commercial purposes. Insect bites, which become infected at the beginning of the rainy season and affect a significant part of the population, are tolerated by a large majority through the use of mud as a preventive factor. In addition, members of the herd have been observed licking sores caused by these parasites, which leads us to presume the presence of substances that relieve or cure these wounds. The newly born and very young may be easy prey for caracaras, vultures, crocodiles, anacondas, pumas, and ocelots. Immediately after birth, and until they learn to swim, they run the risk of being isolated from the herd. On this occasion, the little one was lucky his mother was at hand to avoid an accident. The appropriate nod of her head made him return to the bank. <laughs>